I'm Joe James and in this video I'm going to explain how two three trees work and then I'm going to show you how to implement a two three tree in Python. Two three trees are balanced search trees so all leaf nodes in the tree are at the same level. Each parent node can have either one value and two children or two values and three children. The great thing about two three trees is that they offer worst case of big O of log n performance for find, insert, and remove operations, which is much better than binary search trees in the worst case performance. So they're very similar to two three four trees and B trees, if you're familiar with either of those two. So the operations we want to have for two three trees are find an item, which will re either return the item if it's found or false if it's not found insert an item, which will either return true if it's successfully inserted or false if not, and remove an item, which will return true if successfully removed or false if the item was not found. So in this video we'll cover find and insert. So a typical node may look like this 15 and 24 here. In this case we have two items in the node, therefore we must have three child nodes. And we can see that the values in this node segment off the subtrees of the children nodes into three sections. So there's less than 15, which is going to go into the left subtree, either the left child or a child of the left child. Items between 15 and 24 are going to go in this middle subtree. In this case, it's just one node. And then everything greater than 24 is going to go in the right subtree. And we didn't cover border cases. What if you try to insert a 15? Well, that's really up to, your, up to you to decide how you want to implement that for your tree. You could either block duplicates and not allow duplicates in the tree at all, or you could force duplicates to the left or whatever. So we're going to build a 2-3 tree, tree by inserting in this order this list of items on the bottom here. We'll start by inserting 13. So when we insert 13, we have to create a new node we put the 13 in it as the value, and we point the root pointer at this 13 node. Now we want to insert 7. Well, 7 will fit in this root node, so we add the 7. We always have to sort the items, so we're going to sort these items in the node, and now we've successfully inserted the 7. Next, we'll insert 24. We'll add 24 to the root node. And then we see that we're only allowed to have two items in a node, so we need to split this node. We're going to promote the middle value, 13, to the new parent, and the 7 and 24 will be the left and right child. So now our new root is 13, and the 6, 24 has been successfully inserted. Now we want to insert 15. We can see that 15 is greater than 13, so it's going to go in the right child, and then we'll sort those items and 15 is inserted. Next we're going to insert 4. 4 is less than 13, so it's going to go in the left child, and we sort those items, and the 4 has been inserted. Next we want to insert 29. We're going to add 29 because it's greater than 13, we're added to the right child, but now we see we have three items here, so we need to split this. We promote the middle value, 24, to the new parent, so we have a new subtree here with the 24, 15, and 29, so this is a new subtree. And we basically, since we're promoting the 24, we're going to add 24 to this node's parent, which is 13. So we add the 24 with the 13, and we append these children. We reattach those to this parent node, and we get this. So now the 29 has been successfully inserted, and we have a new tree that has four nodes. Next, we want to insert 20. We can see that 20 falls between 13 and 24, so it's going to go in the node with 15. We sort those items, and the 20 is inserted. Next, we'll insert 16. 16 also falls in the middle node. We add it to the middle node. We sort those values. We have three items in the middle node, so we're going to promote the middle item, which is 16, and 15 and 20 are going to become child nodes. So we create a new subtree like this, with 16 as the new parent node. And then we're going to add the 16 to the parent node of this node. So 13 and 24 gets the 16 added, and we append those two child nodes to the parent node. We sort those items in the parent node, and then we're going to sort the child nodes. 
Now we have what looks like a normal tree again. However, you can see we have three values up here and only two are allowed. So we're going to have to promote the middle node, 16. So we're going to spin off 16 to a new node and have 13 and 24 as its children. And then the left child, 13, we're going to reattach these two children to the 13 node and these two children to the 24 node. So now we have a balanced tree again. And the new root is 16. So we saw in this case, we actually had a series of two splits when we inserted the 16. We inserted into a leaf node, and then we promoted one value up. And then we had three values, so we had to promote that up. So as the tree gets larger, these splits may trickle all the way up the tree. So anytime there are three values in a node, we split the node and promote the middle value. And we may do that recursively, and the tree gets taller by growing up. It doesn't grow down. Next we'll insert the 19. We can see 19 is greater than 16, less than 24, so we're going to insert it right next to this 20 here. And we'll sort those, and the 19 has been inserted. Next we'll insert 1. The 1 is going to go on the far left. We'll insert it next to the 7. We'll sort those, and look, we have three values in this node, which is not allowed. So we'll promote the middle value, which is 4, and we split the 1 and 7 into children. Next we're going to insert 5. The 5 is between 4 and 13, so it's going to be inserted with 7 here. And we sort those and we're done. Next we're going to insert 22. 22 is greater than 16, less than 24, so it's going to be inserted into the 1920 node. We have to split and promote the middle value, which is 20. So the 20 will be promoted up next to the 24. And 19 and 22 become separate children. And lastly we'll insert the 17, which fits next to the 19. So that is how the 2, 3, tree insert function works. Now the things we're going to use when we implement our tree are we're going to have a node class and a node is going to have a list of data and each node also is going to need a pointer to its parent node and each node will have a list of child nodes so these are node pointers. And then the tree, all a tree really has is a root node which it can use to reach every other node in a tree. Now let's take a look at how we implemented the code. First I have some test code at the very bottom here and I basically used the same list of numbers that I used in the tutorial just now so you can test this out and see how it works. And then we have two classes. We have our node class and our tree class. The tree class is primarily the user interface so it contains mainly the user interface functions. So there's a constructor for a new tree, there's uh, an insert, find, remove functions, and then I have two different print functions. The constructor really just sets a root node to none and creates a root node. The insert function takes an item and it's going to test if the root node is none, then it will create a new node and it will say that is a new root. And if there is already a root node, then it's going to create a node from that item, or in other words, add that item to a new node and insert it to the root. And it's going to do that recursively using the insert function in the node class. And then this little while loop is going to reestablish the root to the top of the tree because sometimes the, when you have splits, the root gets uh, reshuffled. So the last thing we do is we iterate through the, the while loop to uh, work our way to the top of the tree again and readjust the root pointer. The find function basically calls the find function in the node class and it passes in the item. And the remove function we haven't written yet. This is just a placeholder function. Uh, the print top two tiers is just going to print the first tier and the second tier. It prints the data for those two tiers. The pre-order traversal traverses the tree. And again, the heavy work is done in the node class. So now let's jump up to the node class. In the node class, we have a constructor called init. And we pass into that a piece of data. And optionally, we can also pass in a parent node if we want to. If not, the parent will be set to none. So we create a new list using this data and we set the parent node equal to whatever was passed in or none and we create a new list for the child nodes. Next we have a string function that returns a string representation of the node. And the string representation of a node, as I decided to define it here, is a string version of the data list for the parent followed by a colon, followed by a string representation of the data in the node itself. And we use that for the pre-order traversal function. We have a less than function, LT, which does a simple comparison of the data of the nodes, data zero, so it knows how to compare two nodes. We have an isLeaf function that checks the length of the child nodes. 
In the most complicated of our node class is the insert function, which we use to insert a new node or a new value. In the tree class, we actually created a new node from a value that we want to add. And so we, when we call the insert function from the tree class, we're actually passing in a node that has a value already in it. We test if the node that we're trying to add that new node to is a leaf. And if it is, we can simply add it. And the add function is going to do this work of merging these two nodes. If it's not a leaf, then we're going to descend down the self node, either to the left or middle or right subtree. The LF here and the else statements are going to test which subtree to descend down. So now let's take a look at the add function, which actually merges the two nodes. So the add function takes a new node, and it's going to merge that new node with self. And below the new node, there may be children, there may be a whole subtree below it. So first we're going to set the parent nodes of each child in the new node to self. Then we're going to combine new nodes data with self's data using the extend function to combine those two lists. We're going to sort the data in self, and then we're going to combine new node's children with self's children using the extend function again. And then we sort those children nodes. And lastly, we'll check if the merged node, self, now has more than two pieces of data, because if it does, we have to split it. So we'll call the split function if there's more than two values in self. Let's take a look at how the split function works. And in line 59, we know that self either has no children if it's a leaf, or four children if it's not a leaf. If self is not a leaf, then we'll reattach self's children with our new left child and right child nodes. And that's what we do here. And in 67, then we attach the new left child and right child nodes as self's children. And then uh, lastly, in line 72, we, now that we've created a new subtree under self, if self is not the root node, then we need to merge the self subtree into its parent node. In other words, we're promoting the middle value of the overpopulated node, which is self, and we use the add function to do the merging. So we simply call the add function on the, the self.parent, and we pass in as an argument the self subtree. The find function is pretty simple. It takes an item. If the item is in the current node, then it's going to return the item. If it's not in the current node and the current node is a leaf, then it's going to return false because we got to the bottom of the tree and the item was not found. Otherwise, we're going to descend down the proper subtree, the, the proper child node, to try and find the item. So it's a recursive call to the find function. Our preorder function is really simple. It prints out the current node. And by that, I mean that it prints out the string representation of that, as we defined in our function up above. And then it basically calls the preorder function on each of the current node's children. You can download the code for this 23 tree here on my GitHub site. I hope you like this video, so please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.